Hey there, Steve at Fox Can Farms. It's that time again. Chicks are coming. Getting about 60 broiler chicks tomorrow, and uh, we're just getting the brooder trailer ready. So, I thought I'd give you a tour of the brooder trailer. Might be something you want to look into. So, of course, anytime you get chicks, you raise chicks, you need to uh, put them in a brooder. Keep them at about, start out about 9,500 degrees when you get them. Uh, dip their beaks into water, and so that way they know where the water is. You don't have to worry too much about food. They've got enough uh, reserves, if you will, um, to live for, for a few days without food. But water is imperative. So you do that, of course, and, and keep them at a higher temperature. So what I thought I'd do is just give you a little tour of the the brooder tra trailer that we use. Uh, we used to have some um, trays that we laid out. They're actually uh, litter or dropping pans that would under rabbit cages. They were 30 by 36, I want to say. And then we would add, and we had some fold-out sides that that we put inside there. We still have it. We still use it because we now we now have uh, uh, broilers that we get as well as laying hens. And this year. We're going to have both, so we normally get a new laying hen flock every two years because it's about that point where the amount of eggs that we get and the food we're giving them isn't quite worth it. So it's time to refresh the flock, if you will. So, so what we're going to be talking about today is the brooder trailer that we'll use, we'll use that trailer for either laying hens or or broilers. In this case, it's going to be broilers, and I will give you a little tour here in just a second take you around. Okay, here's our brooder trailer. I'm not sure if it's going to show up very well in the video. It, right now it's in our garage because we had a little temperature drop. So we'll have our, our chicks will be inside the garage here. And certainly we'll have some heat, heat emitters we use instead of heat lamps. Uh, ceramic heat emitters is what we use. But we'll have those in place uh, to keep them warm. But it'll also be a little bit warmer here versus outside. And it's just really a cheap, uh, inexpensive trailer that somebody had bought, and they built the sides on it. It's just plywood, and it's basically an enclosed trailer. It was sitting on the side of the road, and we bought it pretty cheap, and realized that we could turn this into a brooder trailer as well as a storage trailer for our butchering equip equipment when we're not using it in the winter. So let's, let's scooch over the soil here first to tell you. You can see we've we've made some modifications on the side here. You see that there's a vent right about there and there, and on the other side. In fact, you can see it right there in the back here. So four vents. For, so we've got some ventilation in there, and on the side we have a temperature uh, sensor regulator. I guess you'd say it's made by if you can see it if it's focusing Inkbird. Set the temperature, you can even calibrate it, say if the temperature isn't reading what you think it should be reading. And then what it'll do is hold the temperature pretty close to what you set it at. Right now it's flashing just because it it's not at, uh, this is the present value that it's, that it's sensing right at the moment. Um, and this is the set value. And so it's basically telling us that, hey, you got a problem because you're not, it's not where it should be. You can see that it says heating. There's also cooling because you can both heat and cool with this. We pretty much just use it for heating. This is the same sensor that we use in the winter time in our layer coops to keep the temperature at about 15 degrees above zero. We don't we don't heat it uh, above 15. The chickens seem to do well with that. But anyway, back to the brooder coop. Uh, the sensor wires going inside here. We can look at that inside and we've also got some electricity going inside right here to run the lights and you can see there's just a, a pigtail there so let's uh, let's go around the back and have a look okay here's the back of the brooder trailer bottom part right here is just held in with just some pins that they go into some holes that are drilled in the side so that's easy to remove for cleaning out, shoveling out the bedding. Uh, we also installed, created last year this door 
so that we can get it outside in the warmer weather. Uh, right now, again, it's it's in the garage because of the cooler weather, but <clears throat> we can get it outside and we don't have to worry about predators getting in there. Right here is a adjustable uh, water, water hanger, I guess you'd say. We hang a five gallon pail on there with the horizontal nipples. They seem to work well. And you can see we've already got our um, feed feeders up and they're on pulleys. Take a look, there's a pulley right there. And then we can lift the feed out, up and out of the way. And then we take the food away every 12 hours or we let them run out if we can. If we can't let them run out, say they don't run out, then we'll pull them up. And we have three feeders. We'll have about 60 chicks in here. And this, I think, is about uh, maybe, maybe four or five by 10. Right in the middle there, we have two heat emitters. You could use heat lamps. I prefer to use the heat emitters. They seem to be more durable and accomplish the task for us. The heat lamps I don't care for because eventually the bases on them get loose. And so if I do use heat lamps, we, we, we'll just throw them away after we've used them when we're done. We don't even try to use them again a, a year later. In the top there you see a light that'll be on a timer and then also in the corners some cardboard that's to round the corners out because they will tend to congregate in the corners and then just kind of trample each other and that this sort of reduces that trampling effect that can happen so that's the brooder trailer and chicks should be coming tomorrow morning